Hello again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and today we are doing part two of our... What are these? Cup? Again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba. Today, we are doing part two of our cup and figure two pack. Um, this one, as you can see in a moment, we will be getting into um, the setup of these. The box colors are different, so these are came, these came out a few years later than the first ones that we did on the previous episode. So, real excited about that. Also, today's episode, when we're done with that, we are going to do another giveaway. Yes, and this is a big one. We have some really cool, a really cool item that um, I've taken out of the vault to do a you know, leaving a comment, um, and you know. But it's going to be a little bit more than just leaving a comment. But I'll get to that when we get closer to it. So, for this one, we are dealing with the Revenge of the Sith boxes okay and this is um, means that this these uh, figures came out in 2005 okay and like the other ones that came out uh, that I showed you the other time these glasses are um, or you know I should say cups because they're not made of glass but they look like the premium old glasses have been fashioned to look like both some older ones from the original trilogy as well as the prequel trilogy brand new ones as if they were being made. So what do we have? Well, we have General Grievous, okay, from Revenge of the Sith. We have a Stormtrooper from Return of the Jedi. We have Darth Vader from The Empire Strikes Back. We have a Clone Trooper from Revenge of the Sith. And we have Obi-Wan Kenobi from Revenge of the Sith. So it's clear that when the time came, they actually started to build upon um, newer ideas. And I also want to say, I want to make one correction to what I had mentioned to you guys on the last episode, and that is that I'm pretty sure that these glasses are all newer designs, or at least um, have there's been liberties taken with them, and that they're not carbon copies of the original. Those that are using original trilogy logos are not um, carbon copies. Um, they might be close. Uh, they might certainly be in the same style or same spirit, but uh, they are, I think, different. Um, you know, next putting them next to each other, you'd see a lot of differences. So, just wanted to give you that um, piece of. Uh, correction if you will because I thought they were carbon copies I don't think they are uh, and honestly I went to look for them in my collection and believe it or not I don't have very many of the glasses the original glasses at least I couldn't find them um, so I uh, I don't want to you know speak out of turn when it comes to that so since most the most, most of these are Revenge of the Sith themed so we will start with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and um, you know, I, I, it's so funny when I think about um, the the Revenge of the Sith movie. I'm, I'm really it, it, it does have a very nostalgic place in my heart because that I recall really how. Remember at the time, and again, some of you might be watching may not have been around or maybe too young to remember. Um, oh my, this one's a little harder to get out. There we go. But I can tell you that. Interesting. This one, um, I have to work a little bit to get his lightsaber out. And I need this. So there we go. Interestingly enough, this one he comes with a separate hand, <laughs> which is um, kind of creepy. <laughs> so I suppose. So I see that you can some of this off so I see that you can I suppose you can take a hand I see you take the hand out and you replace it with this hand okay oh I see yeah this you know what this is um, again these figures excuse me these figures are um, not they're not new figures they're they're repaints and or sorry repaints and repacks and this is a playable feature you squeeze the legs together and you can move his lightsaber so uh, and as far as the 
kind of weird. He's got a loose hand sitting there. Okay, fine. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> um, but the glass, uh, really cool setup. Um, these are plastic, okay? They're, they're not, I don't, I don't know if that'll make a sound, but these are actually not glass, but they do have a very, very, very glass feel to them. They almost even have the same weight as glass. They're a little bit lighter. But uh, again, they're definitely a throwback to the Revenge of the, I'm sorry, the uh, original Return of the Jedi Empire Strikes Back and A New Hope glasses. So this is one as Obi-Wan. It says, um, honorable, uh, decorated, and, oh, you know what's interesting about this? I just realized something. Uh, the the uh, text on there, it's hard to make out from here, is kind of cut off on the side here. So I believe it's decorated and honorable Jedi. Obi-Wan Kenobi fights heroically to help save the Republic from evil for the evil forces of the Sith. He desperately tries to help his friend and former Padawan, Anakin Skywalker, who is being lured to the dark side of the Force. Okay, so nice little setup of the figure. As I said, I'll put him in the glass and I'll drop his hand in there so I don't lose it. Okay, so that's cool. All right, let's stick to the Revenge of the Sith theme, and um, we'll work on General Grievous, an awesome, awesome character, um, very much uh, unique to the, you know, in the in the fact that he was. A lot of people like to theorize that here he was a a, a half droid, half organic, kind of like a certain uh, other character. I you know um, Darth Vader. So it's very, you know, like, I think that that was a really clever use of kind of foreshadowing with that, whether they meant to do that or not, but it really came across that way. So I'm assuming that it was at least thought about. So really neat. Let's see if I can get them out of here. It's a nice thing too about some of these, um, these twist ties things that are keeping them in there. With, with age, they start to lose their, their shape. Okay, let me put him down. Just so I can get this. Uh, oh well, we got more lightsabers here. Gotta make sure I. And this one, unlike Obi Wan Kenobi, does not have a separate hand, so that's nice. Oh, he does have a separate hilt though. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed the uh, General Grievous character. I thought it was a great way to, um, you know, further the story along by creating a new villain, but it was a temporary villain because obviously we know that, you know, th th when you think about Revenge of the Sith, that was a very unique kind of story to tell because it was like, it was almost like trying to tell like the Titanic story. You know, everybody knows the Titanic sinks, right? Spoiler alert, the Titanic sank. It was a ship everybody thought wouldn't sink and it sank. Yet they, they have to make a movie about it. So they have to be very creative with how you make the movie. I think so. I read somewhere that the Titanic mo story was told somewhere in the realm of 35 to 40 times in different movies throughout the years. You know, between, you know, old classics to the one, that the very famous one with Leonardo DiCaprio and um, some TV movies and things of that nature. It, it was told, and, and movies from other countries, it was told like 37 to 40 times, something of that nature. So... It's hard to tell a story, make it interesting when you know what the ending is going to be. But I think Revenge of the Sith, while not the Titanic, it's still a story where we know that Anakin Skywalker is going to be Darth Vader. We know that he's going to fall to the dark side. So I think they did a very nice job of making the, st the story interesting, seeing the, the relationship between um, Obi-Wan and Anakin start to sour and become the, to where they become enemies. Just very interesting. And I thought that the use of General Grievous as the initial villain for the beginning of that movie was an excellent way to do it. Plus, I really like the gentleman who voiced him, Matt Wood. Um, he, I met him in uh, Star Wars Celebrations, and he's very nice and a very friendly, very approachable person. And uh, just a really cool character. And, uh, you know, did different things throughout the whole story. So... And on here it says, part alien, part custom design droid, General Grievous is the brilliant and ruthless military commander of the droid armies. He is known for his lightning strikes and unorthodox fighting style. He hunts Jedi for sport and wears their lightsabers as trophies on his belt. So, unique character. So, excellent. There you go, Grievous. I'm going to just pop you in there. No, I don't want to go in there. I know you don't, but there you go. 
All right, and I think we had one more Revenge of the Sith, and that was the Stormtrooper. Uh, I just want to make sure it's not... Yeah, oh, sorry. Not a Stormtrooper. Uh, pardon me if I said that earlier. A Clone Trooper. I apologize. But I got to tell you, speaking of that, there was... Um, there, you know, and I will say this. There is a part of me, I will say, it, I'm not a complainer. I'm really not. But there is a part of me that seriously misses having Star Wars every three years as opposed to now where it's like every year or in this case every like six months but um when episode two came out and we saw the clone troopers come to the rescue it, they were too much like stormtroopers for us for us older fans not to go oh no something's gonna happen these guys are gonna turn on the jedi it's got to be that it's got to be something like that they're gonna turn because they looked just like them, but, but it was so weird to watch them be friends and watch them be, you know, ruled by the Jedi. Or, or not ruled, but like, you know, ordered around by the Jedi. It was crazy. So to see that, knowing that that was going to happen, was it, was it, you know, we knew something was going to go down. We didn't know what exactly, but we knew something was going to go down. And it was kind of sad to watch, even in episode two. Then when episode three came out, oy, the whole Order 66 thing was... It was just absolutely gut wrenching. I mean, crazy. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard getting that thing out. All right. So it looks like it looks as though this guy has like an extra arm, a shoulder pauldron or something. I'm just seeing if there's anything. Oh, yeah. So oh, I see. So oh, I get it. Speaking of what I just said, so you can start them off. It's kind of. I'll try to display this. Oops. I'll try to put that on display so you can see it. But you can start off with the the shoulder. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. No, of course I'm not doing this right. There it is. You can start them off like this, and when he wears the regular, it's hard to see. I'll I'll, I'll superimpose pictures. But when you can see that. The um, clone trooper is still wearing no, just the white shoulder pauldron. It means that he's still kind of the good guy. And then you put the other one in with the imperial cog, and now you know that he has now turned, and he is the. There's another one with the leg action. <laughs> um, then you know that he has turned and is now going to be. The order. This is post Order sixty six, and now he's working for the for the Emperor. So, a uh, a very sad foreshadowing. And as far as his thing, it says here: it says clone troopers fight with single minded deter determination during the Clone Wars. Most clone troopers serve as inf infantry forces, while some are specially trained as commanders and pilots. They all possess exceptional strength, stamina, and battle expertise to make them a formidable fighting force for the Republic. And that is cool, and it's got some great art on there. I love the I love the art, and all of these classes are just fantastic. So really neat, but 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 sad when you think about how eventually these these heroes and and I got to tell you, when the Clone Wars cartoon series came out, and they really started delving into the clones as, as, as human beings, you know, albeit factory made human beings, it was gut wrenching to think that they're going to turn. So gut wrenching. In fact, I think even the storytellers themselves realized they couldn't do it, which is why one particular clone in the Clone Wars, Captain Rex, never did the Order sixty six. And I am very glad, as a follower of this mythos mythology, that that they did not make him a bad guy because I just felt that it did, that's not what he would have done. It's absolutely not what he would have done. All right, moving on. We have the Darth Vader from the Empire Strikes Back. Now, as I said, I don't think these glasses. I originally, I had originally thought that they were. Whoops, sorry, Vader. I didn't get your cape out. I had originally thought that these characters were, in fact, um. These glasses were copies. The Empire and Star Wars and Jedi were actual copies from other 
um, from the previous ones that have been released. But now I've since changed my tune on that. I do believe that they are in fact unique or mostly unique to this um, collection series. So it's hard for me to, uh, to know for sure, but, and it looks as though, I was looking at like the collect all of them and it looks as though I do not have a couple that are missing. I'm, I know I'm missing the um, Princess Leia. So I'm actually gonna look for that. I'm gonna look for Princess Leia on uh, online, see if I can stumble across that. The other ones, I think I have all the Revenge of the Sith ones. So I think there was just one missing from there because I have five here and I might be missing two from the other one. So I'm actually going to try to find them just because I, I really like these and I think that they're a nice little way to, you know, as I said in early episodes, I said that I am not someone who has to be a completist. Absolutely not. It's there's just, there's too much cool stuff out there to be a completist. And that, I know, you know, and what I mean by that is, you know, a completist has to have unlimited room. Even even the biggest collectors in the world have limited space, and things have to be something has to give. So, you know, when you can, if you can have, it's more fun. It's more enjoyable. It's just it's a much more rewarding experience being a collector if you can do so and have you know, pick and choose what you like, you know, that's what I mean. And now with Disney taking over, my God, my goodness, I mean, you saw what, what, um, you know, in previous episodes, you saw stuff about the, um, the, the Disney crossover figures and the Star Tours figures. I mean, those, that's just incredible. So that, uh, that is, um, the ones I, I just realized guys that I got a little distracted here. I apologize. Um, and I actually didn't talk about Vader. So let me, so let me do that first. So obviously, Darth Vader, this is from The Empire Strikes Back, so this reading is specific to that movie. Darth Vader confronts Luke Skywalker in a lightsaber duel in the Cloud City of Bespin. Vader wins the battle when he ruthlessly severs Luke's sword and hand. Then Vader reveals a devastating secret that Vader is, in fact, Luke's own father. And that he plans to turn Luke to the dark side so that they can conquer the galaxy together. Now, we've talked about this in, in, in brief, but... How hard could that have been? I mean, imagine being a person in the audience, a kid, a 10 year old like I was, and you have established when you were seven, when the, first, when the movies first came out, you have established that Luke Skywalker is the hero. He's the good guy. And Darth Vader is the bad guy, the villain, the monster. And then only to find out that he is Luke's father? What does that do to you? I mean, and then, and then only a few minutes later to have the movie end and know that you have to wait three years to find out, is it true? What is it going to do with this information? How is it going to act? Is Vader going to turn him to the dark side? He had all, all these questions. And we didn't have the internet to discuss it. It was crazy. So, so that, this is a pivotal moment. And I got to say that, that Hasbro has done amazing jobs with the Vader figures, the Vader sculpts. Um, they're really, really awesome. And again, the glasses, just such a cool way to, to display them. So there you go. And we have our Stormtrooper from Return of the Jedi. And again, getting back to this, back to the Clone Wars, I am so glad that they did not, that they did not make Rex a bad guy. In fact, they hinted to the fact, although, and then I don't think they came right out and said it, but they hinted to the fact that Rex actually fought with the rebels at Endor and they had him all decked out in his beard and his funky Endor hat and green fatigues. He was the old guy in that, in, in the bunker area. Now, I know some people have said on the online that that's not necessarily true, but let's face it, folks, it, it's just a story, okay? It's not something that really happened. So one could, because of that, one could uh, definitely, you know, uh, make up their own ideas about it. So I choose to believe that it was. So there you go. All right, and now here's his glass. Stormtroopers are the Emperor's loyal soldiers. They attack with speed and accuracy, striking fear into the hearts of everyone they come up against. They cannot be bribed or made to change their allegiance to the Empire. Refusing to surrender, the heroic rebels fight the Stormtroopers with unrelenting courage. Um, I like the art on this one as well. It's a little different. They have one, uh, one Imperial soldier, or sorry, officer there as well. So that's really cool. Not a big fan of this figure. He looks kind of quirky looking. Um, the way, I mean, I guess I can make position him a certain way, but it's just the way the articulation is is a little odd. 
So I'm also thinking I'm not going to bother holding. I think I'm going to holster his gun. Oh, wait. Darn it. I can't holster his gun. It's just uh, there's a holster, but not a place to actually put the gun. Just, it's just there for show. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so. So that one's all right. I'm not a big fan of the figure, but I, but I enjoy the glass and everything. So there you go. And um, another piece of trivia about the um, Stormtroopers. Out of work lumberjacks. That's right. Out of work lumberjacks. That's who they were in Return of the Jedi when they were fighting in Endor. Who knew? Right? That's really cool. All right. Piece of trivia there. Dropping some knowledge on you. Now, I said there's a giveaway. Okay. So before we get to our, um, our, our, our goodbyes, let's talk a little bit about this. Last two giveaways. Nice items. Okay. Nothing crazy. This one, we're going, we're going a little bit while, a little while ago. All right. Here's what we're going to give away. This is a Star Wars Unleashed Tusken Raider. Okay. Now, a little heads up. This is from 2004. Okay. So you're talking about 14 years ago. And the premise behind this was, um, I think at the time, Lucasfilm Hasbro was trying to get in on the um, plastic uh, toy, st but not really toy, more like statuesque kind of idea. And they created these, what, what I can only be described, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put some pictures out with this in the back, but describe, I can only describe them as legendary kind of almost, almost mythological painting versions or sculpted versions of characters, okay? And they created these very stylized, action-posed, but not figures. You couldn't really move them. They were just posed. You put them, on, put them together and you take them out and you pose them and that's what it is. You put it up and that's your, it's a statue. And really, really, really well done. And very, very good art. Not just art in terms of the sculpt, but even the art on the box was pretty incredible. So I was collecting these, okay, and I collected quite a few of them. In fact, I think probably at one point I had amassed almost the entire thing as a collection, okay? But um, at this point, I've decided I'm going to part with some of them. So um, rather than unbox them myself, I mean, I, I have unboxed a few. I do have a handful on display in the, in the collection, but ultimately... I am interested really in just um, using some of them as giveaways. All right, so here's what I'd like you to do. All right, now it's not just give it, leaving a comment, okay? Um, what I'd like you to do is, um, I'd like you to leave a comment, but I want to answer, I want you to answer this question. What is your favorite Star Wars movie? Okay, that's it. Just answer me that question. You don't have to give a reason. It can be any movies, the original trilogy. It can be prequel. It can be the Clone Wars. It can be the Last Jedi, Force Awakens, Rogue One. I will even accept. I will even accept the Ewoks movies. I will even accept the Star Wars Holiday Special. It was two hours. It's technically a TV movie. Okay, I guess you could say. I will accept anything that says that has Star Wars on it. All right, so leave a comment with that answer. It has to be in this uh, comment section. You must leave it in this comment section, okay? Those who have already won, I'm gonna ask you guys um, to uh, step out of this one, let other people try, but maybe you can recommend other people to comment, okay, on your behalf, that's fine too. Um, I also would ask that we um, limit this to domestic. This is a, meaning United, the continental United States. This will cost a lot of money to ship, so um, to try to ship it overseas. So uh, United States, uh, you know, 48 United States only, please. And uh, please leave a comment on what's your favorite Star Wars movie. If you want to tell me why, you can. I'm, that's okay. But all that's required is you tell me, just name a Star Wars movie that's your favorite, okay? Thank you so much. And um, we'll give this a week. All right, so um, it'll be, there'll be, you know, we'll, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm filming some of these in advance, so when this one drops, okay, um, it will be a week, two episodes later from this one, okay? So you have um, basically a seven day turnaround from this cycle, and I will announce it at the next one, okay? So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out all my other videos. Like, subscribe, share, hit the notification button on YouTube. Uh, check out, check me out on uh, Twitter and Instagram at Darth Tuba. 
and the Star Wars unboxing page on Facebook, and you can leave comments on any video. But this is only this one. We'll give you, uh, we'll give you access to the um, ability to win this. Okay, so thank you so much. And if you have any other questions, you can either comment anywhere or email me Darth Tuba at darthtuba77 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching, and may the force be with you.